Hey everybody. Hi, so everybody. uh Unfortunately, we died, so in this Darn. roguelike, we now have to start over from the scratch. Yeah. And our new randomized story, and hope we, <laughs> hope and we can get a different outcome. We're going to end up with, <laughs> with Flynn in this one. So uh, it was Because he's everyone's favorite character. I was dicking around for a second, and I accidentally discovered this. It's a nice little art gallery. So this is, a, this is a thing that's here, apparently. That's got... Like the CGs we've unlocked. So these three, these four are from the original pre-campaign, I guess, or the pre-route, and then these three are from the route with Carl. Remember that one? Aww. That was nice. But then I clicked on this, and I guess this is like the music. It says Ad Astra, which is weird. It won't let me click on Ad Astra, though, but I know what that sounds like. But there's like all sorts of stuff here. Some of these could, one of them's called intimate. Some of these could be spoilers. <laughs> Your arms around me. Ugh. <laughs> How you doing there, Chase? Oh, oh that goes back here. What does this one do? Oh, ooh, spooky. Oh, it shows the uh, the it transitional shows the, the day, day scenes. Slides. Yeah. Why does someone have, uh... What's, uh... What's up there, Chase? Why does it say metaphor? <laughs> um... Hmm. Why do they have different numbers of days somehow? Seems that way. Well, no, I guess not. Six, no, six, No, TJ, TJ and Jenna don't have a yeah. sixth one. What does that mean? <laughs> uh oh I have questions. So this is so this down here is this. What is that? It's a. Uh, oh, I thought it was a bottle, knocked over. Oh, it's a it's party party. Oh, streamer. it's a party popper from the oh, birthday. For the, for the birthday. That it looks like a horror thing without context. Oh, it's a. Oh, this is a chapter select. Gotcha. It's not what we're doing. No, but it's fun to look at the art. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that, oh, I can also go there with my, with my D pad. Looks like. Okay, so that that exists. <laughs> Came as a bit of a the, the, unfortunately. Ah, the controls are still broken for a joystick. All right, I did it myself. <laughs> Pro <laughs> tip: one. Don't grab Jenna, which I figured was bad, but I also kind of wanted to see a bad outcome because this is a horror game. I uh, I do wonder what the name of this this music is on that music list. Yeah, it's the very intense, scary music. Yeah. Grab Jenna was just so obviously a bad idea. <laughs> well, that's that's why I a part of me thought that maybe it was such a bad idea that it was like Reverse the right psychology. one. Yeah, because it just seems bizarre to do. All right, well let's push Jenna. Carl, watch out! I yell as loud as I can before giving the fox the hardest shove that I can give. I do it at an angle so she doesn't directly hit Carl. Carl leaps to the side as I slam into her. Sending Jenna forward to face plant into the rocks and dirt. I reach out to Carl just as Raven goes blurring past oh, me. Oh, he's still a hero in this one! He leaps onto Jenna, pinning her down. Go! Just go! We'll figure something out later, but you need to get away, Carl! Raven's great. <laughs> Raven's snarling as he tries to keep Jenna pinned. Something that doesn't match his cheerful face at all. I can't even picture that. It's weird, right? It is weird. Carl stumbles to his feet, then turns and starts jogging away. Carl, wait! Help me up! Carl seems to hesitate before <laughs> finally turning around, leaning over to help pick me up. And with that, we limp away, toward the road. I think we're headed towards the mansion again, but Carl turns towards the road to the town instead. The growls and snarls get fainter behind us, and I start to worry about what's going to happen to Raven. Hopefully Jenna just stops once Carl's out of sight. He seems to be the only thing she's interested in right now. Carl breathes raggedly in my ear, over the sound of his stumbling clops and my dragging shuffles. Somebody should have taken the knife. Yeah, you called that. You called that real good job, Keith. You called that real good. I mean, someone should still have, have taken the knife now. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, 100%. So nobody's taking the knife. If she's pinned down, you just step on her wrist. And yeah. And just take the knife away. Carl, 
You want to go back to your house instead? That's the, she's right there. You gotta get away. I would, I would think. Carl doesn't respond, and I look over him to him to see him looking straight ahead, eyes fixed on nothing. Carl. He gives his head a little shake. So I go back to staring at my own feet. My ankle is numb at this point, which I guess is better than the lancing pain I had earlier. We're further down the road, now to the point where I can't hear Jenna or Raven anymore. Going this way might have been a good idea, since Jenna will probably end up going back to the mansion. Does she just need time to cool down? And where are we supposed to go now? I'm starting to realize that what just happened is going to affect everything. How are we even going to be near each other now? Jenna just tried to kill Carl. Jenna. Or John. I feel a sudden burst of anger towards him. A fucking serial killer possessed her, forcing her to do this shit. Hmm. Carl's breathing is getting more ragged. I look over at him again. I'm not really surprised to see tracks of tears down his face. Oh. Carl, do you need to sit down a second? Take a rest? A few seconds later, Carl stops abruptly next to a small boulder, and I allow myself to be sat down on it. The ram doesn't sit down next to me, though. Instead, he starts pacing back and forth in front of me, occasionally wiping his face with his arm. Carl? Carl, sit down. I don't know what to do, Chase. N neither do I. Just just sit down for a second and we'll... No, I don't know if we'll ever get out of here. Carl sobs, then goes into a coughing fit. No, no, come on. We're doing good. We're at least getting somewhere. Where? This could go on forever. You don't know. I look up at the ram, trying to think of something comforting to say. Chase, Chase, I can't do this. I need... I need a second. Carl turns and starts walking further down the road. Carl? Carl, wait, we shouldn't split up. Uh, hang on. Yeah. I stand unsteadily, leaning over to rest a hand on the rock as I watch Carl continue his trek down the road toward the town. Just wait. I, I need a moment. I'll be back. Carl! I feel myself start to panic as I stumble after him. I realize that not only am I afraid for Carl, for what might happen if he runs off into this fake world, but I'm also afraid of being alone here without him. I hobble after him, but I realize immediately that I'm not going to catch up. I watch him get further and further away, down the middle of the road. I wheeze, clutching my chest as I try to keep up, the sides of my vision starting to turn white. I'm not sure what it is. The panic, my breathlessness, or the world itself, but the whiteness seems to pulse with the faint sobs of the ram in front of me. Slowly, the white takes over, and I'm in a fog. Well, the white really did take over. It's snowy now. Yeah. There's a distant, rhythmic pounding that sounds like a gong. Where have I heard it before? I feel a twinge of worry in my chest that I'm going to be late for my next class. Class. Oh yeah. School. That's the clock tower that chimes every hour. Freezing cold leaks through my fur and stings at my nose. I bring my hands up to rub at my shoulders, shivering. The ground is covered in snow even though it never snows here. At least not this much. We had a flurry once a, once a few years ago, and even that was a surprise. But here it is, piled up on the ground. My mind is still catching up to me, feeling as if I've woken up in a dream. Fuck. Fuck, what happened? Carl. I was chasing after Carl on the road. It all comes back to me slowly. I was going after Carl, after Jenna tried to. I hear clopping up ahead of me. My head snaps up, looking into the fog, unable to see clearly through it. Hello? Carl? 
My voice echoes into the emptiness of the university. Pueblo University. It feels like I haven't been here in months, rather than just a week. I rub my shoulders again before padding up slowly to one of the buildings. The pain in my ankle now is a dull, throbbing feeling, almost like it's dead. That doesn't seem like a good thing, but at least I can walk. It's just that I have, a, I have to limp, feeling like I'm walking with a giant log instead of a leg. I focus on the building in front of me. I don't remember this one. In fact, I don't really remember any of them. The buildings are different shapes, just built with the same materials and colors of the buildings at the university. I reach out, grasping at the handle. It's locked. I stare at the door for a while, unsure what to do. More distant clopping of up the sidewalk gets my attention, so I start moving in that direction again. Carl? I call out more softly now because I'm starting to feel afraid of where I am. While I can't see any more anyone, the fur on my neck is prickling, like I'm somehow extremely vulnerable. I guess the only thing I know for sure about this ordeal is that nothing is as it seems, and for some reason I don't feel like I'm in a safe place. You were never there for me, you know. I jump. Carl? The only response is silence. At least it sounded like Carl. Kind of. It was crackly and muffled, like it was coming through a phone. I start to jog up the sidewalk and notice that I'm stepping through the snow. Like it's not really there either. We're not gonna hurt ya. The voice comes right over my shoulder, and I cringe and let out a yelp, stumbling in my in my run to turn and face whatever just whispered in my ear. I stare at nothing. It had that same crackly mechanical sound to it. My fur is now standing up, all over my body, and I rub at my shoulders again, hugging my chest. A soft sound, maybe a footstep, behind me, makes me whirl around in the other direction to find more emptiness. I stifle a whine and start trotting up the sidewalk again. This place is different. Something about this place is dangerous. It's unlike the mansion, or the cabin, or even being next to that hanging guy. Something could hurt me here. I don't know how I know, but I know it. Carl. My voice is getting more desperate. I've never felt more alone. Right now, more than anything, I just want to find Carl. You want me to be there for you? I jump, but keep jogging basically hopping with the way my leg isn't working at all. That's funny. The sidewalk starts to curve, and I come up on the squirrel's pond. I whisper to myself, Fuck! Where are you? As I keep walking, the ground no longer feels smooth. Instead, I feel little pointed bits of rock sticking into my feet pads, even though there's smooth pavement when I look down at the ground. I pass a little stone bench, one that Carl liked to sit on back when he was at school with me that first semester. I just can't, man. I wish I could, but every stupid fucking thing I say is so stupid. Trust me, man. It's not. I lift my hands up to my throat, shocked because it de I definitely didn't say that. My voice is coming through like the others, muffled, distant, from the direction of the bench. You don't understand. It's like I can't stop going over what I say to people, then I just worry about it for days after. Well, just don't. Just forget about it. Huh. Right. Seriously, man, no one cares. Just don't worry about it, okay? Yeah, okay. I turn around, moving back the way I came, not wanting to hear those voices coming from the bench. I move back to where I was and look around. The sidewalk branches off in several distant directions, and I have no idea which one to take. 
You weren't there for me. What? I stand there a moment, feeling the panic starting to rise. What's the matter, cunt face? We're not gonna hurt ya. That's not Carl. That's not me. I'm hearing things. I close my eyes, hugging my chest again, stealing my breath. Softer clopping sounds come from my left. I open my eyes and immediately move in that direction. Hey, we're just playing. I grit my teeth and mumble to myself. I was a kid. What was I supposed to do? Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, the, uh, it's those kids that the water on us earlier. The water balloons. Yeah, because I remember yeah. them saying cunt face because it was such a weird <laughs> insult. <laughs> There's no response as I keep moving. A loud pop makes me jump and cover my head. What the hell was that? Like a water balloon. Was that a gunshot? I crouch on the sidewalk, looking left and right, but not seeing anyone. Was someone shooting at me? It seemed kind of far away. Whatever it was, just sitting here probably isn't going to help me. So I start moving again, a little faster, half bent over. To my left, I see the football stadium, rising up into the fog. I'd gone there a few, for a few games, and... A dance that they held on the field for homecoming. Dude, I'm not feeling very good. Wanna go back and play something? Come on, I told you to not be like this. Can't really help it, man. Just tough it out another hour. Nah, man, I'm gonna head back. Alright then. Alright, later. I keep going, whispering to myself, to Carl. Is that you, Carl? Can you actually hear me? No response. I keep going, listening for clops. When I hear them, I follow. After what seems like about ten minutes, I come up to a smaller building, one that the path leads directly into. I slow my pace as I come up to it, staring at the door. I listen for a long while, but there aren't any more clops. I reach out and rest my hand on the handle, then give a slight pull, expecting it to be locked, but it inches open smoothly. Staring for a while longer, I finally pull the door open and find our old dorm room. Look at how little room they had. That looks like a dorm room, all right. <laughs> Jeez. Are their beds so high up because they store stuff under them, I guess? That's a lot Oh, like little desks under there, or like, yeah, you put yeah. things under there. I mean, like, I don't think it's high enough for desks. So I'm a little bit confused as to why it is so high up. It's like a very weird, specific height. Yeah, I find it weird. Huh. Like I said, it's just for storing stuff, but like climbing into that bed would be annoying. Yeah, I've never had a dorm, been in a dorm room. I've been to one, but they didn't have college. beds like that. Yeah. In fact, I, th in fact I, I picture bunk beds or something. I've, I've seen ones with bunk beds before. Like most things in this nightmare, it isn't exactly the same. Actually, it's probably about three times longer, like it's the interior of a stretch limo or something. And at the very end of it, I see Carl splayed out on one of the beds. It doesn't have a mattress in it, so he's just laying on the fl a flat board. Slowly, I hobble over to him. He's staring up at the ceiling, and I'm kind of surprised to see a slight smile on his face. Uh, hey, Carl? Carl looks over at me, surprised. Still got his bloody shirt on. Yep. Whoa. Hey, dude. What's up? He laughs over the last few words. I stare at him. What? Uh, are, are you okay? Actually, yeah. I kind of am. Uh, are you sure? I move over to the opposite bed. To my old bed. Yeah. For the first time all week, actually. I push myself up onto the bed, which is off the ground a good three feet more than at the university. Oh, I think they so just, some just nonsense had a is weird happening. picture, and I think he, the, the person making this had felt the need to justify the picture. <laughs> Cause it's weird, because I don't think they would... I think was, they have this picture, and I don't even think they know why it's like that. <laughs> My feet dangle over the edge. 
Is your ankle okay? I told you to wait. I just needed a minute. I frown. Seriously? You just left me there, in a place with smoke monsters. Carl grimaces. Yeah, sorry about that. What happened? I slide around onto the bed to face the ram, noticing that while they're tall, they're a lot shorter in length. Short enough that Carl's hooves stick over the edge. Well, Jenna tried to kill me. I rub my shoulder, looking away. Yeah, but you know she's not in her right mind right now. We were talking about how maybe John... Oh, it's definitely John. James tried to do the same thing to me. Yeah? I was going to ask what it was like. Carl pokes at the wall above his head, tapping it with his finger. Well, he basically just told me that I needed to find some stuff out, keep lies from getting out. He couldn't tell me why. Hmm. I wonder what John's telling Jenna. Carl shrugs. I mean, can't be good if he's a serial killer. Yeah. Another period of silence. I don't mind it. It kind of feels nice. Not at all like outside, where I felt like I was in imminent danger. The only problem right now is that something smells kind of bad, but it's subtle enough that it's not really bothering me. So, uh, we're at the university, huh? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. It's like a king of the hill. Yeah. Wonder why. You hear the voices out there? Yeah. Things go quiet again. I wonder what the hell Carl might be thinking. He looks ridiculously peaceful. Okay, did you find weed somewhere? Because you're looking as chill as I've ever seen you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Carl scratches his nose. Well, I guess I just realized some stuff. I wait, but he doesn't go on. Like what? Well, Chase, that I don't need you. I frown. What? Carl laughs. No offense, man, but I realize that I rely on people too much, you know? I still don't really know. Did something happen? I guess I always sort of held it against you with what happened with Clint back in the day. Oh. The fight? Yeah. And also some things at college. But then I realized that it isn't fair. He pauses. But I don't say anything. I realize that I'm really responsible for myself in the end. That I need to help myself. That's... Good. I can't help but wonder if now is the best time for this epiphany Carl is having, is having, but it explains the setting we're in right now. Did he do this with his own mind? Is everything we've been through the result of our own imaginations? Carl sits up suddenly, rubbing the bed. And that I'm sick of feeling like I have to do something important, that I need to be important. He turns on his butt to face me and spreads out his hands. Because I'm not. I'm not important at all. I'm a rich-ass, spoiled little shit, and that's about it. Come on, Carl. No, no, it's a good thing. I'm happy because I realize I'm okay with that. Carl smirks at me. I want to go to college, but I want to get an art degree. Then I want to get some job I can halfway stand and play games in my free time. He stares at me, and I stare back. Okay. Carl laughs again. I know this sounds stupid, but realizing this, it just feels good to feel comfortable with my own, in my own skin. I haven't been comfortable for so fucking long. Oh, that's... That, that's good. I try to smile for the ram. But, I mean, we need to get out of here. If you're gonna do anything. Yeah, yeah. It's weird that I'm feeling this way right now, but what isn't weird here? Carl reaches out again, feeling it carefully. Reaches out to the wall again, feeling it carefully. Anyway, when I said I didn't need you, it sounded fucked up. And I still love you, man. Yeah, I love you too. But I need to say it out loud, I guess. I don't need anyone to make me feel okay. I just need to be okay with myself. 
And I guess I am. I give Carl a weak smile. Not sure of what else to say. Sounds cliche, huh? But it's true. I mean, I'm just happy that you're okay. You ran away so suddenly. I had another panic attack. Almost as bad as the one I had here. Carl points over to the opposite end of the room, at a desk. I came back from that stupid dance and had a bunch of homework to do for that computer programming class my dad made me take. I don't know, having that bad experience at the dance, then trying to figure out programming I didn't fucking understand. Something cracked. Carl looks over at me. When I got back home, things were worse than they'd ever been. Then one time I dropped acid and thought I killed you. <laughs> oh no. Jeez. <laughs> oh. That's a, a moment to have. I can very much relate to dropping out of programming. <laughs> uh, I can relate to not understanding anything about it. <laughs> That's uh, I made it three semesters in and I'm just like, I... I can't, I can't deal with this thing where you write a fucking novel and you have to proofread what's essentially like a novel in another language to figure out why it's not working somewhere. And it's like, it's, it sucks so much when it's not working and you just don't know why. Because if uh, you can spend like weeks working on one thing and if it doesn't, if it's not working at the end, then it's just not working. And that's the equivalent of having basically done nothing. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work. Period. The end. Like, I can't even fuck. begin to fathom any of, of that. I'm so I'm so disengaged in how this stuff works that it's like, I don't even know where I would start if I, like, I, 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 I can't it, even use, I can't even, like, say, like, five terms that would be used in that mm -hmm. class. I can't even think of the words that the teacher would say. I have no clue. It just, it quickly became a kind of stress I did not want to stay with. <laughs> Understandable. I make a face, but Carl waves his hand. Long story, but then I thought that was a sign that maybe you were the one that was holding me together all that time. Carl? I, I had no idea. Yeah. How are you supposed to, to know? I didn't say anything, and when you came back to Echo, I thought maybe I could pull myself together with you there. Carl grins. Then after this hellscape thing, and Jenna, I just got fed up with it, I guess. Carl shrugs. I don't know. I cracked again. But it's like I cracked back in place. I just feel good. I just feel okay now that we're going to get through this. I finally kind of chuckle, too. I'm, I'm happy for you. I really am. Just wish we could actually get back to Echo so you can feel better there. Carl taps his teeth loudly with his fingers, then looks at me. What? <laughs> Why would you do that? That's just like a thing he picked up because his fingers also are like fist, are like hard. Is that a tick he has or like a thing he does when he's bored? Is that a fidget? Is that a thing <laughs> that people do? I don't know. That's a weird... I don't know what to make of that gesture in general, but he does have hard fingers, so maybe it's a thing he does sometimes. That seems like the biggest... It seems like such a stretch, though. It's like, oh, he I has hard know. fingers, so he likes to collect. He likes to touch his teeth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who makes that connection? I don't know. He's just, he's stimming. Dude, I think we are. Huh? I look at him quizzically. Carl runs a hand over the bed again. You know, if you if you start tapping your teeth with your fingers, I would just think that you were possessed. <laughs> I'd be like, connect like, the cuts, connect the cuts. I'm like, you're not Keith. Who are you? <laughs> I just realized something. Looking at this place. Can you see it? I furrow my brows. See what? This place seem familiar at all? Because now I'm seeing something completely different. I squint. No. It looks like the dorm. Just a super long version of it. Carl smiles. Nah, man. We're in the diner. That's why it's so long. What? But I can't go on, because as soon as I see the shape of the diner, the dorm room melts away like a mirage. So they picked a they picked a picture with tall beds on purpose, because it's where the countertop is. Weird. Weird. That is weird. Does that mean they've been... Does that mean that everyone that's freaking out is just walking around Echo like normal, doing whatever Tweaking they're doing? Out? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, maybe. are we doing the equivalent of what Duke did or whatever? 
it's like we were just already were at the house uh when the stabbing happened and then but but there's just a perception thing going on with everybody so they didn't they like lost us somehow i have no like can people just <laughs> no. see us freaking out but we won't see them what a terrifying thought <laughs> it's so weird to have that lack of control yeah like he just walked according to the layout of his college and it took him to the diner just like coincidentally I'm trying to remember them describing him getting around even because i don't think they described him going through a dorm building just him entering the dorm room uh this is weird. i have a lot of questions about this <laughs> as if i didn't already but you know yeah i'm on a table and carl sits across from me on the opposite table oh oh Carl's smile stretches into a grin. What if we were just eating chalk? <laughs> like, that would be funny. <laughs> we were just actually eating chalk. We what like... did they eat? <laughs> what did they eat? They're just like biting into a, a bag of like baking soda or some shit. They're like, uh, s- sir, I need to ask you to leave the store, please, sir. Yeah. You're like, no, I'm, e- I'm making grilled cheese. It's like, <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, this is a quarry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I guess we see the truth now. What is that What is the mean? truth? <laughs> what is the truth now? So, we've been here the whole time. Did we, like, fucking eat peyote or something? What happened to us? <laughs> there was a gas leak across the whole city. Uh, that's all that happened. It was, it was Scarecrow from The Batman. I gasp heavily. Leaning on Carl as we make our way up the road toward the mansion. Looks that way. I think it all happened in my house. I look around me, in the darkness of the night. While the surreal feeling of dreaming is gone, I still feel like I'm in some kind of nightmare. Carl tried his phone the second we realized we were back, but it was dead. Here, outside, no one is around. Though we did see a few bodies in the middle of the road. What the fuck? What the hell is happening? I think everyone's gone crazy. Carl seems to be mostly talking to himself. I remember seeing Janice running through the street just before everything went to shit. And I'm inclined to think he's right. Should we maybe go to Leo's place instead? I I don't know. I kind of want to find Raven and Jenna. Break them out of this first. I mean, she's still got that knife. Maybe she's calmed down. You guys want to risk that? <laughs> Maybe she's calmed down. I mean, you left Raven with her. Maybe she's calmed down. Then we can tell them, tell them and snap them out of it. Well, you'd think the others would come and find us or something. The fact that they haven't. Carl grunts his acknowledgement but doesn't say anything more. Well, they're fucking mad at us. Meanwhile, the mansion looms ominously in front of us. And there's no sign of Raven or Jenna in front. There's the tree where we saw the body hanging, thankfully empty. I vaguely remember, I vaguely wonder if the newspaper clipping that the corpse ate is still there somehow. As Carl half drags me to the driveway, he hesitates. Listen, maybe you should wait out here. I'll uh, wake the others up, then I'll grab the keys and we can drive out to Peyton, get away from all of this. I laugh, despite myself. Yeah, right. Everything After everything we've been through? Besides, I saved your ass when John went after you. I might have to do it again. What if Carl's just like, I'm sick of carrying you around? Yeah, <laughs> you're but like, heavy. you're gonna split up now? People are dying, apparently. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Carl smirks. Yeah, alright. But if she, he comes at us, I want you getting the hell out of here. Get into your car and get to Peyton. In hindsight, maybe we should have gotten my car from the motel and left that way instead. Carl shrugs. I would have come here anyway. I'm more worried about Raven right now. We're on the steps now, and Carl listens intently, his long ears poking up. It's dead silent. My heart rate starts to pick up as Carl reaches for the door, imagining Jenna, John, running out of the darkness, knife in hand. Very slowly, Carl twists the knob and pushes open the door. 
Thanks to the well-oiled hinges, it makes a hardy sa- it makes hardly a sound as it slowly swings open. We're met with darkness, aside from a few LEDs from the TV set. Carl leans close to my ear. At least the power's still on. I'm going to try the landline first. I nod as Carl and I step over the foundation into the house. I'm happy to see that Carl's kitchen looks like looks just like Carl's kitchen. Despite the terrifying atmosphere, there's a relief that comes with knowing that we've broken free of that nightmare, whatever it was. Just then a distant, soft pop echoes from the town. We both look back for a moment, and I remember the sound I heard while running through Pueblo. Had someone shot at me? I don't have long to dwell on that as Carl tugs me into the kitchen, purposefully leaving the door open behind us. He's probably more worried about what might be in the house rather than what's far away in the town. The ram reaches for the light switch, then thinks better of it. He leaves me to lean against the counter before moving to the phone. I look around. Noticing that the table is set with a few plates with what looks like squares of drywall on them. Oh my them. gosh, they're eating fucking drywall. That's uh, the grilled cheese was drywall. Uh, I mean, that was the that was the thing that was suspected from the beginning is that they might have been eating something else. But ooh. What is drywall made of? Can you survive eating drywall? No, some people do unfortunately so like if you have like pika to, if you have pika people eat um try to think of what drywall is made a of. lot actually oh, boy. you're not supposed to eat it but it does but. happen to people that have that um condition where they mm. eat inanimate object or they just eat objects that aren't edible it's a I mean, it's a nutritional it's been maybe a cu- it's been maybe a couple of days so i guess, I guess carl and raven are okay <laughs> i think we didn't bother they would kind of spit it out but the one that the one that kind of scared me earlier was when we went to go grab that cup of water and we were like this smells like he was like describing it and i was like i thought it was gonna be pee because the way he described it but what what was the thing he almost drank <laughs> yeah it was salty yeah he said it he said that it um looked like water but obviously it would look like water to him because he's hallucinating yeah. this is really fucking weird it's not not fun to think about what surprise thing you might have put in your mouth i don't like this uh I think the scariest part of this is, like, the lack of, uh, not the lack of agency, but, like, basically like being in a situation where you don't have any control over your brain. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a horrifying thought. Like, the, like, I think that's why people do freak out if you, if you, if you do something like peyote or acid and you're in a bad mind frame and you realize you can't get out of it once you're in there and then you realize you don't have control over what you're seeing or thinking and you freak out yeah people have real bad times drywall the fact that the whole table is covered in dust that probably came from the in fact the whole table is covered in dust that probably came from the crawl space i frown at that before noticing a clear cup on the center cat on the counter full of some kind of yellow liquid dude what it's it's piss at the same time, I see a piece of paper laying next to me, st- uh, standing out on the spotless counter. I reach out, pressing a hand over it, and feeling the smooth piece of paper, its size and shape familiar. I pick it up, looking around for a light source before seeing the fridge and, and hobbling over to it. Line's dead. What are you doing, dude? I open the fridge, letting the dim yellow light spill out. I hold up the paper, which seems to be a copy of newspaper clipping. This is the photocopy from the cabin. I whisper loudly. Meseta boy missing. Native settler. Tensions rise. This is the one that was burned. Yeah. Fifth native boy goes missing in two years. Native chief says disappearances did not happen until settlers arrived. James Hendricks has been confirmed in the county jail. Confined in the Jan- Jan- uh, in <laughs> blah, 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 blah. James Hendricks has been confined in the county jail pending further evidence. I look up at Carl. Wait, 
So was it James that was kidnapping children? Carl shrugs at me. I really don't know, man, and I don't think it matters right now. He did have a point, considering we weren't trapped in the nightmare anymore, though it's still I still feel like something is missing. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I fold up and shove the paper into my pocket anyway. So the phone's dead. I think we should just grab the keys and... Carl's ears prick up. Uh-oh. I'd do the same with mine if I could. You hear that? No. Carl moves to the stairs. Stay here. I'll be right back. I shout whisper. What? I'll be right back. I think I hear Raven. I bite my lip. This new boost of confidence that Carl's gotten is great and all, but his hero complex is about to get him killed. I follow the ram to the top of the stairs, watching him about to start downwards before jabbing him in the back with my knuckles. I look back into the almost as dark kitchen before making up my mind and hopping down the stairs after the ram. They're going down the stairs? He jumps. Are they going into the... In the crawl space. space. Okay, I was gonna say, why is I was just, the kitchen's not upstairs? <laughs> it yeah. Makes no sense. Holy shit! You scared the hell out of me. Carl also shout whispers. Well, fuck you for thinking of leaving me up there. I told you outside we're sticking together. Okay, okay. Just hold on to my shirt or something. Okay. With that, Carl starts making his way down the stairs with me limping behind. Slowly but surely, I start to he hear something, too. It's muffled and quiet and sounds very much like a voice. The voice is calm and reasonable, and I'm pretty sure it's Raven's. Carl stops next to a door on our left, where the voice seems to be coming from. Wait. Maybe I should open it? If Jenna's in there, it's not like she's going after me, right? Yeah, she'd never stab you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not... <laughs> I mean, that was, it was kind of on huh. accident that one time, so. Carl seems to hesitate in the darkness. I don't know, man. Don't worry. You're, you'll be right next to me, right? He's like, hmm. <laughs> There's a moment of silence again before Carl shifts next to me to the side of the door. All right. But get behind me if she goes after you. I nod as well, even if he can't see me. I take a breath, stealing myself for what might be behind the door. Slowly, I push it open. It's also dark in this room. The wait room, I realize. The talking stops immediately before it turns into a whine. Oh my god! And the door opened by itself! This is insane! Because <laughs> they can't see us. I feel the light sh switch next to the door and flip it on. There sits Raven, tied up to a weight machine with what looks like several pieces of clothing. What? Oh no! A few pieces of paper sit in his lap and on the ground. The husky is staring right at me, but there's no sign of recognition in his face. There's no sign of Jenna either, thank God. Raven? Oh god, it knows my name! Raven starts writhing around in his, in his bonds. Uh, Mr. Ghost Thing, uh, what do you want? Do you want money? Honestly, I don't have very much money at all. I work at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I work at Spencer's. <laughs> Minimum wage sucks. Carl pokes his head in, too. Hey, Raven? Can you hear me? But Raven keeps babbling on about his job. No one appreciates me there. <laughs> and like, they make me- I don't even get that much of a discount. And <laughs> They make me sort the dildos. <laughs> Carl frowns and shifts past me into the room. I stand in the doorway, looking back into the hall, but only seeing darkness. Raven's still chattering when Carl reaches out, resting a hand on his shoulder. The shriek that Raven lets out makes my fur stand on end. Oh my god, oh my god, no, 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 no. <laughs> Shh. Carl presses his hand in the husky's mouth, muffling the nose just a bit, but that's when Raven's eyes widen. Whoa! 
Whoa. Hey, Carl. He stares around, wide-eyed. Wow. Where am I? In my house. In my weight room. Are you okay? In his own weight room? That's where he gets Jack, because his parents are ripped, and he has dedicated... It's the one thing he does besides video games. <laughs> Apparently, he's lift weights. The husky looks at Carl again. What? How? Carl shrugs. We have no idea. I look back into the hallway to make sure Jenna isn't coming after all that shrieking. Then look back at the other two. So... It's that easy? We just have to touch them? Carl turns to me. I guess. It's like, it really is just a dream or something. Hey, Chase. Raven is craning his head around Carl now. Hey, Raven. Raven stares around the room again. Wow. You know, just a second ago, I was in a really fancy looking bedroom. I had a bed with curtains on it and stuff. Raven, how'd you get tied up? Oh, Jenna, of course. Actually, she calmed down a bit, and I brought her into the house. But then she punched me. <laughs> Carl sets to untying the husky while Raven rubs the back of his head against the weight machine. And I fell down the stairs, and she dragged me into this room and tied me up. Why is he... <laughs> He's, he's <laughs> blushing. <laughs> he's fucking blushing. I don't think we see that expression. No. <laughs> he's definitely blushing. He turned <laughs> red. <laughs> I got tied up by the lady. Oh, no. <laughs> Raven smiles sheepishly. Honestly, I, I probably could have fought her off. <laughs> he was into it. But facing a tiny, maybe a serial killer girl with a knife is kind of scary. And I just did what she told me. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh no, don't tie me up. Uh, that, that's okay. Do you, uh, do you know where she is now? I glance back into the hallway. Still nothing. No, she went back out. She did come back like 10 minutes ago, though, and shoved these papers into my face. Raven points at the papers in his lap. And on the ground with a free with a freed hand. Carl uh, gets started on untying the binds around his legs. Said something about these being the real letters, the truth or whatever. I limp into the room, partly because I don't want to get caught by Jenna if she suddenly comes in, and also because I want to look at the two letters. They're short. One of them's about a paragraph, the other is only a few words. Because it's second nature now, I pick up the longer one and read aloud. I don't know what to say after finding your dungeon. No. Oh, no! There are no other words for it, James. It is a dungeon. And after finding the boy's body, finding out what you've done to it, there truly are no words, James. I only know, now, why you were never satisfied with me. All of your sweet words have turned to poison. I'm leaving you to the law, and leaving this wretched town behind. I only hope that God has no mercy on your soul. I pick up the other letter, placing it over the first. You are disgusting. I don't have James's letters, so I have no idea what John was responding to. I, th I don't think you need the other letters to figure out what it means. Mm -hmm. I also don't know who to believe anymore. John or James, or even the thing that they were talking about, could alter the notes left around in that dreamscape. There's no way I could even begin to piece together who was manipulating what. But maybe because I'm in the real world now, and this is certainly real, this could be the actual truth. I also noticed the collection of dust on these photocopy pages taken from the scrapbook and stashed Stump somewhere probably the crawl space considering the state they're in is Jenna in the crawl space right now searching for letters Raven finally puts his feet out of the uh, pulls his feet out of the ropes rubbing his arms he nods at me 
said she wrote that one in jail after James had written to him? I gotta say, since that whole knife thing seems like she doesn't know who she is. I fold up the letters, putting them in my pocket with the news article. I mean, she keeps going on about James and letters. Did she say anything else about the letters? Raven frowns, looking at the ceiling. Hmm. She said something about not being able to finish the game, because one of them burned, and the other got, uh, eaten. Well, we have, yeah, we have the burned one. Yeah. The, I put a hand in my pocket. Quote, quote, burned one. Well, I found the one that burned on the counter upstairs. I don't think it burned. We just saw it burn. I think to the tree outside in front of the house, but Carl shakes his head. It doesn't really matter now that we're free of this shit. Let's find the keys and get the hell out. Carl starts on the last restraints around Raven's ankles. I get up and limp to the doorway again, looking out towards the crawl space. In that moment, I hear a whisper of movement down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>